Hey guys, it's Missy Wolf, and I'm here with Ed Roman. Hey Missy, how are you? How's it going, California? Oh, it's going well. <laughs> how's it going with you, though? You're you're pretty busy, and you've got some amazing stories to share with us, and I'm I'm so excited to hear all about it. But um, how, how's it going with you right now? How's everything? Well, great. You know, I, we were just talking off air, but the summer's here, and I'm planting a very large garden as I always do, and. I come from a big background of farmers and cattlemen as well. Mm -hmm. So it's part of my, uh, part of my existence come, you know, June through October. So, and growing gardens is a really artistic kind of thing. It's not just something that you, you sort of throw into the ground and expect it to, to, to happen. You have to nurture it just Mm -hmm. like right soon or for any of those things. So I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm happy. I mean, and I'm working a lot and I tell stories. That's my job. Right. You know, I'm a, I'm a storyteller, so well, yeah, I'm happy, I'm happy to be here. Your photos alone on, on your social media and on your website tell stories. They're amazing. You have an amazing personality that shines through each photograph that I have seen, and I'm just completely intrigued. And I think my favorite photo of you is with your Sylvester cup. I love that. I love that picture. And Sylvester's always been my favorite, but it was like you took on the per- personality of Sylvester in that photo. It was great. I've had that cub since I was five. No way. Oh, yeah, Fire King. I collect, my wife and I collect Fire King and old, like, depression glass stuff. But that was at an old cottage. It used to belong to a senator from the United States up here in Keswick in Canada. Oh, and he wow. left a ton of stuff, including old trunks and uh, a lot of the, the, the glassware that was in there was, was from them. And I was like, wow, can I have this cup? And my grandma's like, yeah, that's your cup. Wow, that's really cool. That's really, really cool. I and you know what? I'm glad I talked about that specific photo then. <laughs> well, you know, we all have little things. Like sometimes people call me a pack rat, but you know, it's part of nostalgia. You know, mm-hmm. I guess as, as being a storyteller like that and a songwriter, that's where good ideas and memory is con- conjured from. Right. Exactly. It, 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 and you know how things are, are described to people is a big part of it. You could have one person tell you one story and the same person tell you the same story, but it depends on how they're, they're delivering it. Makes right. a big deal, right? Now. Exactly. And you know, I always talk about the delivery of songs because some of the artists that I've interviewed or had conversations with, um, you know, when I've watched certain covers of a song, you know, I'm not saying others aren't, aren't great at it. Everybody, you know, that I, I've talked to, they all sing well and it's, it's, Wonderful, but then there's always that one where you listen to a cover of a song and you've listened to a million covers, but there's always that one that stands out because that person just gets it. And whether they're relating to something personal in their life at the time that they're delivering that song, the emotion just pours out of them and it's it's like it strikes your core and it's it's great. So I'm glad you talk about delivery because for me, that's one of the most important things as a listener is that I want to hear the connection between the artist and that song. I want to feel it. If I don't feel it and I don't connect to it, then I'm going to move on to the next one, you know? Well, and that's why playing cover music can be really soul-sucking because mm-hmm. for me, it's like I lacked on this, just like you said, certain music because it's pulling my heartstrings or my mind or, or something in some way, so I cannot help become engulfed by it. Right. And, and even in writing my own music, it's like... You know, my mother-in-law used to say, you know, I was a human gargoyle. Like, I, the personifications of people that you let become anthropomorphized through mm-hmm. yourself and the music all becomes a part of it. Like, I did, a, I used to spend a lot of time doing theater, and I did a lot of acting in high school and stuff. So, for me, music and, and, and what that is and how you describe it to an audience of people is a big part of it. So, mm-hmm. you, know, you know, I love it, man. It's, it's my life. No, it's great. And you just you just did some humanitarian aid in Jamaica, and you have a song, a, a video that you shot on lo- on location there, that I just I fell in love with. I mean, you get to see real culture there in that video, and everything that that is happening is actually happening in that video. And I want to know what that experience was like for you. Well, you're right. It is like being there because we went after many years of talking. Come on, let's finally do it. You know, right. And we went to a resort, but in short order, we were friends with gardening staff and Mm -hmm. musicians and people that are cooking. And they're like, well, come on, let's go out and check stuff out. So the very next bunch of times we did that and went back, 
we decided to stay in this little cabin that's kind of out towards a uh, race course in Oracabessa. It's owned by a musician named Papa Curvin. He's a Jamaican recording mm-hmm. artist. There's a recording studio there and artist cabins. And that allows us to use that as a jump point to right. be able to go and do different things on the island. And humanitarian aid, look, you know, everybody is in need of something at right. some point in their lives. And when you get out from behind the walls, uh, of, the, of the resort, you start to realize, look, man, the people that are working here, they're here from 5 until 8 or 9 o'clock at night. Sometimes they don't have running water, electricity, a toilet, right. uh, you know, proper bathroom. For, like, it's tough to make it a, a go there. But every little bit helps in some way. We are now godparents to a young girl there, Imani, and through mm-hmm. our friend Albert and, and his wife, Shauna. And that helps us, you know, connect to the island in many ways other than what we give to them. Right. And we share our experiences, but we also send shipping barrels. And we collect stuff from people around the area, whether it's neighbors or family or friends, it doesn't matter who it is. And anything that you think that is like, well, this thing's been sitting here forever and the kids don't use it anymore, we put it in barrels. Or we go to dollar stores and stock up on soap and toothpaste and you know, everything here that you kind of take for granted right. that for them is an expensive thing to pay for because when you actually go out and buy food there, you kind of start to realize, man, it's almost at par as what it is in North America. Right. So you, and the average Jamaican makes about 135 bucks every two weeks. That's pretty tough to yeah. make a living. So how hard is it then to say, well, how can we give back? And, right. you know, music culture on that island thrives, and it has for many mm-hmm. years very easy to sit on a porch till two or three o'clock in the morning singing with people you can strike up a, a a singing group with people anywhere you go and 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 that's what's a little different for me about being there it sort of reinvigorated my cultural experiences as humans as far as that's concerned right right my my sister i have to say she loves jamaica for that reason um you know it's just very alive and very you know very very fun for her and she just she loves it and it's, it's just a happy thing for her when she goes there so you know she makes it a point to go there as often as she can um which is probably not as often as you but um i've yet to to go there but it's always been a place i've wanted to to venture out to so hopefully. well and i want to start a music school there one of the things that goes through meeting people that uh, you know are musicians some of which went to the alpha boys school and that is a School that brings in wayward boys, and you know they're dependent on charity in order mm-hmm. to make the school run. But one of the trades that they teach is music, and you know, with that said, a kid may only start to get instruction with an instrument at the age of 14. So I had the idea of um, you know going there and starting like a bookmobile music school bus idea. Oh, how fun! I met a met the chief of police in Ochos Rios through other circumstances, but he's a good friend of mine now. <laughs> and a bunch of uh, a bunch of youth groups that are in the area that support a lot of the boys and girls soccer teams, football teams, I should say. Right. Um, and all of that and the hum behind it is kind of what gave me the idea. And then I actually found and met Bunny Whaler because uh, through this whole process and meeting a couple of people. He's like, you know, Bunny Whaler's been trying to do this for a long time, and people don't know Bunny Whaler. He's the last surviving member of the singing group, Bob Marley and the Whalers, of the singing part of it, and mm-hmm. um, percussionist as well. And anyway, make a long story short, he's been trying for years, but, you know, the Board of Education and the way that they are and how things work makes it really difficult. Right. But he was like, well, I'll support it. You know, if you want to, if you want to try to do fundraiser and get people behind mm-hmm. it, I, I'd, I'd be there to help. You know, christen it with a bottle of champagne, kind of a thing. Nice. So, so with all all that, like, you know, eventually my ten year plan is to spend half of my life a, a year there, and, and and inside of that, build an artist retreat for people to go to to be able to study music, play music, experience right. the island. Um, I love that place. Oh, that's that's great. That's exciting to hear too, because you know, I mean, I've, I, 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 my interest was already peaked to to going there, but now hearing this, I'm like, oh wow, that just it really does sound like a a great place to get out and explore, and you know, I mean, but especially to actually know what it's like for some of these people, and you shedding light on how much they they make and how much they need, and you but know, in, in Karen Misty too, it's also because I'm overwhelmed by the sense of gratitude from people there because right. when you give a little bit you get more back in a completely different way like 
people showing up at their cabin in the afternoon with fresh mangoes from mm. their own mango tree. Right. Or, you know, you're getting special meals that nobody else would have gotten or seeing things that nobody else has seen. Right. That's what that that's what makes me feel so so warm inside of the culture is that it's so giving. Right, right. Uh, now, is there is there anything on your website or any information like? Do you collect donations from from just your local neighborhood, or is there a place that well, people can send things to? For well, you? this is the, this is the thing, Missy. Uh, you know, I, 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 group think is important, but at the mm-hmm. same time, I'm always trying to encourage people to do this themselves. Right. And, and it's like, well, how do you how do you meet somebody in, in Jamaica? Well, look, if you go to Jamaica and you get mm-hmm. outside, well, in short order, you're going to meet somebody that needs help or right. ask you for something in some way. So instead of monetarily giving people money or those kinds of things, because it happens all the time, yeah, you can just find places that are willing to ship it next to nothing. It takes much longer. It's four to six weeks. It heads in an ocean liner and it gets right. there. But that's kind of the idea of this sort of, you know, common sense revolution way of thinking about stuff. And I know there are good organizations out there doing stuff, Mm -hmm. but I've also heard that there's also been a lot of corruption and things that don't end up getting to where they need. Exactly. Right. And I think that's why a lot of people are hesitant to to send, you know, through some of these organizations because of that. And they've, they've heard the stories and... You know, they were promised that their, you know, donation was going to good, and it never made it to where it was supposed to be. And, you know, right. people and, get very and discouraged. Even, even outside of that, mm-hmm. like, okay, get away from the shipping barrel concept in the West Indies Islands. I'm, your backdoor neighbor may need help. Yeah. People that are down the road, kids that are in your community that need uh, uh, some extracurricular activity, teacher, right. something that is always related to that thought process of giving without asking for anything in return. Absolutely. And, you know, I mean, there are definitely so many people here in the United States that, that, that need help, and as I'm sure there are in Canada as well, you know. And, I, I mean, it definitely it starts with home, right? It starts with us. Um, right. So I, I think that's a really good point. I mean, gosh, you know, I, I'm a member of several different communities, special needs communities, so... Um, you know, with medically fragile kids to, you know, developmentally delayed kids and, you know, and on. So um, there's definitely a lot of help that people need. And I know that for people like you that give, I think that's great. And I think you need, you know, to be applauded for that. And um, not that's not why you do it. I get that. But it's still, you know, I'm, I'm glad to see that you do. And it's it's nice when you get to talk to an artist who's using their talents as well to to help bring smiles to people's faces, even if it's nothing else but encouragement and a smile and some entertainment. You know, like when people go and they entertain for the troops, that just makes me so excited, which brings me to my next thing. You're you're an ambassador for Heart Songs for Veterans, or you, you are one of the artists that have, have worked with Heart Songs for Veterans. What has that experience been like for you? Well, amazing. Jill, Jill uh, Pavel is, is a wonderful lady. Project Lips, Heart Songs is an incredible organization. They're trying to do the exact same thing. Right. They're trying to, to raise awareness, um, monies to help vets um, that, that need it, that are like people in your backyard, once again, that are like, need to pay their electric bill, need to have food, need to, the basic things that we're all like, okay, well, maybe, you know deal with this this week and those people might not be able to so it for me it's a heroic deed i mean once you can and being asked to do it it's a no-brainer because you know for me art aside from people like well you know it being a commodity and trying to make money and sell merchandise and touring and all those kinds of things that's one aspect as to the business of music which for me has been more of a learning experience in the last 10 years of my life than ever but Art, for me, is reactionary. I'm, I, I write it, and I get involved with things because I care, or I'm moved, or mm-hmm. I'm, I'm angered, or whatever it is. Exactly. And in, that, in that regard, then, you know, the song itself, when I was asked, I was like, well, I was writing this tune for this new record, Red Omen, and, it, you know, it fit so well. The metaphors, um, you know, what I was trying to say, other than the fact that it's directly related to saying something, you know, that's on surface value. 
Right. Uh, I, oh, I hope it has m- multiple tiers in terms of it, its psychological impact of what I'm trying to say. Okay. It's a bit of a Trojan horse as far as I'm concerned when it comes to the same kind of the, the, the symbolism as we've just been talking about, to lay down your aggressions, to right. give or um, to, to try to understand what those things are. So, you know, it, it, I, like I said, it's been an honor, and, and it's been incredible, the, the outpouring and the response and the people that have been sharing them. The video that I've contributed mm-hmm. to the song, and it, I, I can't be happier, really. That's that's great, and I know that that Jill is appreciative of every single artist that that takes time and you know um, supports Heart Songs for Veterans. Um, you know, she's a she's a friend of ours at Center Stage Magazine. We absolutely love Jill Pavel. She she's she's been really really great, and you know we've become friends outside of our our business, which is really fun too. But um, she she really is, man. You know, when when I first started talking to her and seeing all the things that she's done, it's like it completely opened my eyes. And I thought, wow, you know, there really are so many great people out there who are willing to help and willing to give. And when you see them come together, it's just, it just does something to your soul and it just makes you feel so good. So, so to see, see this happening, thank you for being a part of that as well. Well, and it changes the frequency, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. It, Instead of it being the stress or what do you do, what can we do? Nobody's responding. Right. Well, we pick ourselves up, pull up our socks, and we do it ourselves. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that, if that's not empowering, I don't know what is. Right. Right. And and that's why too, you know, we're we're committed to you know bringing attention to these causes and these groups and these independent artists and you know, I mean, we're all about positivity here at the magazine and helping. How can we help? And you know, how can we encourage others to just keep uplifting everyone? You know, um, and we've all heard stories that the music industry can be brutal and, you know, um, different businesses, there's this and there's that. And we're just like, man, people need to quit stepping on each other and people need to see that the best way to help themselves is to help others. And well, you think of what Live Aid did with Geldof in the past. Oh, yeah. Willie Nelson and yep. Farm Aid. And it, it, that's the thing. It, it, art, art and artisans themselves mm-hmm. are always putting themselves in those positions because we are people people we 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 write and we experience and we do what we do because we live in the culture so to not somehow support that or and or rally people in some kind of a way i mean it behooves us to do right right absolutely absolutely and your your new album i know you briefly mentioned it red omen it it's not out yet it comes out in june um, are you doing pre-orders for that, or? We are. It starts on the 30th, okay. and you can get that at iTunes, but the 7th is the release date for June. Perfect. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited. There's a lot of people already sharing it and talking yeah. about it. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that, that, that tune that we just mentioned is also a part of that record. So right. everything, everything, you know, that's the thing about art. It's like a, when you get to a forest, you know, you never know how you're going to move through it. But as mm-hmm. you sort of subtly look, you start to realize there's a, a, a simple path that you can kind of follow, and as you do that, so many things start to fall into place, like, oh, look, there's a creek, and hey, there's some berries, with mm-hmm. and oh, hey, there's a bear over there, let's just keep our distance. All of this and the record and working with Jill and mm-hmm. everything else has been such a, an incredible how you might say, uh, serendipity, if you will. Right. And, and I'm just, I'm happy to bring the people the art. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, we're excited, you know, at, for it to come out and, and to see what response you get because we know it's going to be great. And I mean, you're already nominated for three Josie Show awards, which is which is great. Are are you going to be there in September? I'm hoping. That's what I'm planning on doing. I'm just about when I get off this interview with you, I'm going to be doing a video for her and thanking nice. her for all that. It's just like I can't believe it. She's she's a firecracker. Oh my gosh! Right? I'm like we're not because I I actually had a conversation with her and and everything and I just keep thinking like wait are you from here are you are you real like you've been uh, you've been doing this since you were how old like uh, what <laughs> yeah I and the book that you just put together yeah. yeah I know talk about an inspiration that girl yeah so hey Josie we're all we're all we, we love you here <laughs> but um we're definitely planning on being at her awards show as well um we know several of the artists 
that have been nominated as well. And um, it's 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 going to be a great night. And what what were the three awards you were nominated for? I have to actually double check, and that's why I'm going to be doing the video. Ooh, uh, nice. Okay. Okay. Up. And this is all just something that's been new. The last three this days just so came out. We're trying to get the stuff through CD Baby, mm-hmm. all the uploads happening, all the emotional stuff right. just with the tunes, the codes. Uh, that, that I'm literally expecting the merchandise on my doorstep within a day. Wow. It, it's been kind of crazy. And all of this now, I'm like, what? What? <laughs> You're like, okay, my mind is blown right now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. I love it. Well, I I know you're busy. I don't want to keep you any longer, but thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me today. And I just, I can't wait and good luck. We're going to keep our fingers crossed for you on those awards. Um, I just, I'm excited, but I'm definitely excited to see, you know, the release of your album. And if you, if you end up doing a CD release party or anything like that, please let us know, keep us informed and anything you need us to promote for you, we absolutely will. Anything we can do to help, just, you just oh, let me know. Thank you so kindly. And I'm going to hopefully see you in Nashville in September. For absolutely. Show. It'll be fun. It'll be fun. <laughs> All right. Well, oh. <laughs> you take care. You too. Thanks. Ms. Thanks. Bye. Bye.